long uh, day in office and hectic job. And when you come back, you go back to the family and kids and you forget everything. So I personally feel that, you know, it's the biggest blessing to have family and, you know, have, uh, have kids. Really important. No, I'm talking about the other one. Which high school? What we did is a demographic study of the Muslim population all around the world, 232 countries and territories around the world. We looked at how many Muslims live in each today. We looked at how many Muslims there were in each 20 years ago. And we projected forward using the best demographic techniques to try to estimate how many will live in each country in the world 20 years from now. All the girls from Al Fatih and boys? We need boys. Yeah, we need boys too. Back Everyone. Around, you know, 90. Five ninety-six. Uh, we were about 150 to 200 people, you know, in one location in Herndon, Virginia. The community has grown to now, you know, 5,000 families. We have 10 locations. Two of them are at a synagogue, and one at a church. That just shows the love that the greater community shows in supporting diversity. What we see happening in the Muslim population in the United States is pretty dramatic growth, in absolute numbers are more than doubling from about 2.6 million to about 6.2 million and in percentage terms roughly a doubling. Just to put that into context that means that roughly speaking Muslims by the year 2030 might be about as large in the United States as uh, Episcopalians or Jews are in the US population today. That's an important doubling, but it's still a very small percentage of the population, still under 2%. When you're talking about such a small population, how is it going to retain its identity? And I think the Islamophobia we're seeing is forcing these very ethnically and culturally and socially and religiously different Muslims to come together. If you say to me, well, how many are going to be followers of Al-Qaeda? How many are going to be supporters of Osama bin Laden? Uh, I can't tell you that. I have no way of predicting levels of religiosity in the future. All, I can, all this tells us is numbers of people. Fifty years ago, if you asked anyone, who do you think of when you think of a Muslim, someone like Muhammad Ali would come up. And now if you ask people, what do you think of when you think of a Muslim, who are they going to name? And we're only talking about five decades. And that shift has been incredibly traumatic for the American Muslim community because I think precisely when we stopped emphasizing the arts and culture and heritage in all these different ways, we lost the ability to communicate Islam in a way that really makes sense to people. About 20% of the enslaved Africans uh, that helped build this country were Muslim. So uh, Muslims have history in this country from before its foundings, its foundings. They served honorably in the Revolutionary War, Civil War. The only Muslims in the U.S. Congress, for example, are African Americans. They're named Keith and Andre. Uh, they don't stick out in the way that people would assume that they would uh, stick out as Muslims. It's not very easy to become French if being French means an ethnicity, a language, a history, a culture. Being an American, that's a very open definition. It's very easy to become an American. Nice shit. You know, for me, America is the best place to live. Because here you have the religious freedom. You have the choice. You have the right to say yes or no. You have the right to protest. You have everything a human being, you know, wants to have. You have everything.